Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. Welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mass making sessions. We are up to week number 212, would you believe? So what are we making today? We are making envelope booklets. So if you are wanting to join along, what you are going to need is a bunch of different envelopes or, or you can use the same envelopes. Um, I've bought a variety. Um, a lot of them are the five by seven envelopes. They're the types that you get kind of like maybe in a card making pack or something like that. Um, I've got some smaller envelopes here, different sizes. I've got like some vintage airmail envelope. Again, different sizes. Oh, won't be using that one because I've sealed it closed when I copy dyed it. So uh, let's take that out of the equation. Um, and then I've got some that I've actually made myself just from some of my um you know patterned papers and these again oh now look yep i've now glued this one together so oh it's a disaster already before we've even started um so yeah i've got a whole different bunch of size envelopes i've got my scissors i've got a bunch of plain papers now i have bought along different papers so i've got some food colored papers I've got quite a bit of kind of fly sheet. Now the fly sheet are, are those sheets in the front of books, you know, kind of like um, the plain pages or the pages like with the title and things like that, you know, basically with not a great deal of text on. Um, so any of those, they're brilliant for this kind of project. And then I've got some vintage ledger. Again, this would be quite good for this kind of project. Um, so that's my, my plain papers. Then I've got some baker's twine in a couple of different colours and I've got some string. Now I have to say I usually use white string. Um, I'm not sure even where my white string is. I'm looking around and I cannot see it anywhere. So today I've got this, um, it's more like twine to be honest. So just the kind of like twine that you would use I guess in the garden or something like that. So that's the um, string or twine or whatever. You don't have to use twine, you don't have to use string, you could use um, sari silk or something like that, you could use like fibres, you know, any of those kinds of things. And again, once we get making, you'll see what, what this is going to be for. Um, you're going to need some glue to stick your string or your twine or whatever on. If you didn't want to, you know, have a like fastening mechanism, and again, this will all come clear once we've made one, then what you could do is just paperclip your booklet closed. So, you know, up to you, really. So either something to secure it, i.e., you know, twine, sorry silk, something like that, or maybe a paperclip if you prefer that. And then you're going to need um, a stapler to staple your pages into your, you know, what's going to be your booklet. Um, I think that's all that we need. Other than that, you might want to have like some distress ink or something for just if you want to distress ink your piece. Again, that's all optional. And then you might want to have some pieces, you know, to decorate your, your finished booklets. Again, my desk being my desk, I've got stuff everywhere that I can pull from and obviously, you know, use to decorate. So let's get making one of these and then hopefully it will all come clear what I've just been rambling about. So let's take first of all one of these now this is just a coffee dyed plain envelope okay so I've just coffee dyed it and yep that's all it is so I'm going to just take some of my paper so for example this was the fly sheet that I was talking about so you could have this then to form pages. Now it's up to you how you do this. I think I'm going to fold mine in like that. Okay, and then you just want to take your pages obviously smaller than your envelope. Okay, so I'm folding mine and then going to use my folds as my guide for where to cut. So like that. I personally like to normally use two sheets per, you know, per booklet. Again, up to you. You can alter that. You can use more if you want to. You could use less if you want to. I find two sheets are good because it's not going to bulk your booklet out too much, but it's going to give you, you know, a good amount of journaling space. 
Then you're going to put it into your envelope. This is your spine then for your booklet. And this is where you're going to take your stapler. Now, if you have got just a regular, you know, regular stapler, what you can do is kind of fold your pages in, not squishing them, but just curving them. And then you can get your stapler in like that. And then just staple your pages in like that. Oops. Just check that I'm... Oh, I'm in the right place there. That's it. And then just there we go. And that's all there is to these. Okay, so that's your little booklet. And then take your twine or your sari silk. Or if you decided that you didn't want to use that and you preferred to use paper clips, let me see. Do I have a paper clip floating about? I mean, generally, I always do, but no, of course, that would be way too straightforward, wouldn't it? So let's just pull one in. So if you didn't want to have a, you know, tie-up closure, you could pop a paper clip around here. Now, the reason why this is not going to be great for when these are going to be glued into a journal is because they're going to be glued in on this flap. And of course, then you're not going to be able to take the paper clip on. Uh, on and off. So the paper clip is only suitable if you are not going to be gluing this in. If you are going to be gluing this in, then you're going to need to use, you know, an alternative fastening. So basically, all I like to do is, you know, take my string, oops, tie it around like that. Okay. Like that and then just cut it down and then literally whoops don't know what that pink is a bit of fluff or something i just then glue my my twine or my string or my sari silk you know whatever it is that i've used i just glue that down here onto the envelope okay so that's just being glued straight onto that flap again you might want to have like a dried wet wipe or something to just press that down and don't worry you know if you're kind of thinking oh that looks rubbish this flap is going to be glued down onto the page so it doesn't matter you know all you're doing is literally securing the closure uh clo yeah, <laughs> closing mechanism okay so that's all there is to these so they're absolutely brilliant aren't they so I'll just move that to one side. We'll run through one more just so that, you know, it's nice and kind of clear. So I'll just run you through this one. So this is a little envelope which I have made. This is from my um, little roses background papers. It's obviously a printable in my shop. It's been printed on 120 GSM. So I just made this, you know, little rectangular shaped envelope. So again, I can use this little piece that we just, you know, didn't use. And I'm going to just fold that down there as my guide for where I want to cut this. Oh, I'm so sorry if you can hear Bo there. Just groaning, letting us all know she's she's in here with us. Yeah, she's in her bed just beside my desk. Okay, so like that. And then again, just take some other sheets. So let's just see what else I've got here. Oh, I've got quite a few tiny little pieces of paper so brilliant one for using up your scraps here just take in second sheet like that okay and then again pop them into your spine this one obviously I don't even need to you know fold it in because the envelope's pretty tiny so we can just then staple that in oh gosh should have put my glasses on because I've now stapled the Stapled the staples, not on fact on the fold, but over. Doesn't matter too much. It's it's still fine. It's still, you know, it's still fine. Um, yes. <laughs> In an ideal world, if you wear glasses like me, maybe put them on. Oh dear. Never mind. Right. So again, we're going to then take our twine. Might use the pink for this one. Actually, no. I'm going to use the string again. So yep. Just take the string. Tie it round. Oops. Like that. Mm. OK, 
Okay, cut that down like that. And again, then we're going to just glue that down here on the fold like that. Okay, don't worry too much. You know, if you feel that this is not really glued down, you know, brilliantly well, it doesn't matter too much because once you glue this onto the page, obviously it's going to hold in place, you know, slightly more. Again, this is a small envelope. This is not obviously, you know, as big as this one. So if this were going to be used not on a page, i.e. tucked into a pocket, this would be the perfect one to be able to use the paper clip for your closure. Now I can't even see where the paper clip's gone. I mean, I only just had it a moment ago. But yeah, you wouldn't have to use the string. You could, in fact, just use your paper clip because this would be then popped into a pocket. So completely up to you, really. Um, but, you know, you might want to refrain from putting a closure on your small ones if you think they're not going to be glued onto a page. So, yeah, just kind of up to you, really. So that's all we're going to be doing. Now, I'm going to be mass making these. So for those people who don't normally join along or, you know, watch on the mass making, what I mean by that is we're going to be um, assembly line styling these. So basically, we're going to take all similar stages so, i.e., you know, fold all of our pages, marry them up with some papers and tuck them in. And then we'll do all of our stapling and then we'll do all of our, you know, getting the string and tying it round. And then we'll do all of the glue and the string on. And then at the end, we will decorate one up. So, yeah, do join along with me, um, you know, and we're just going to relax, have a lovely time for the next, you know, 45 minutes or so or, you know, maybe an hour. Um just having a lovely time basically mass making some of these so i'm just going to like i say assembly assembly line these you know just yeah just enjoying ourselves basically so we can just relax now and have a catch up so i hope that everybody's week has started out well i've, I've just got some more um envelopes here with pink so I'm just going to grab those in and marry the papers up kind of accordingly because obviously why wouldn't I okay I've got some lilac paper here as well so maybe I will have that with the the lilac in fact probably could get my two pages out of that like that so yes I hope everybody's week has started out well um I hope you've all had a lovely weekend and things i am filming this on the monday to go out for you guys on the tuesday so my week's only just started i have to say i'm filming this in the afternoon i had quite a few things that i needed to do this morning um so yeah i'm a little bit later than normal but we're you know we're here now so this is my um myrtle cottage papers and i will try and tell you which papers that i'm using as we go so i'm just going to put things to one side as i'm slotting papers into them so again, this one, I think we could have the pink and maybe just marry it up with, with maybe some of this. So, yeah. This, again, is my Valentine's papers. So I'll just pop that one in there. This one needs the second sheet. This, again, is the Roses collection of papers. So there we go. Yeah, I'm having to film this a bit later and it always just throws me completely off. Um, so I'll apologise in advance because, yeah, for some reason, if I film later in the day, it just always leaves me a little bit kind of scatty. And um, I think it's just that being out of the normal routine. It just throws me out a bit, doesn't it? But yeah, so I'll apologise in advance for if I'm a little bit scatty, but... At least we're at least we've made it. We're here and um, you know having a, having a nice time now. So okay, yeah, this is an absolutely brilliant way to use up some of your fly sheet. I have to say, um, you know, we accumulate quite a bit of this fly sheet, don't we, in the process of journal making. So to be able to use it up in something like this is is great. So there we go. So, what have I been up to all week? Well, not a lot. I'm trying to think. <laughs> trying to think, to be honest. 
Um, what have I done? What have I done? Well, let's start with what I've been watching. So, I said last week, I have been watching a lot of what we call Channel 5 over here in the UK. It's accessible via um, something called My5. Um, that's here in the UK. You know, like if you've got one of those smart fire stick things on your TV, that's how I access it, is My5. Um, if you are abroad, you know, and I'm saying abroad, I'm assuming that that BritBox thing is available everywhere. Um, so, yeah, if you are abroad and you, you know, you like watching kind of British TV, then it would be available, I'm sure, on that BritBox. So what have I watched? I watched something called Coma. Um, oh, it was really good. I really, really enjoyed it. So, yeah, it was on my five called Coma very very enjoyable um i think last week i was watching i think i was watching something called cold call also on channel five which of course i've finished now um yep i did really also enjoy that so yeah those are my kind of two two things that i've really been watching and you know quite enjoying um there, there just seem to be loads of different things on there to watch so yeah i'm getting quite you know quite in the zone there watching lots of channel five stuff haven't been to the cinema this week um yeah haven't been to the cinema uh don't think there was really anything particularly on that my son and i wanted to watch i normally go generally with my son and um yeah we just you know there was nothing really on this week so we didn't bother going well that's not the right color is it i thought that was gonna look good but yeah not the right color mm, why does that really um yeah so we haven't been to the cinema which is unusual uh the weekend what did we do so on saturday um well it was absolutely freezing on saturday and again i use that term loosely probably to a lot of people you know <laughs> around the world who are in genuinely cold places i'm sure you would probably think is she kidding it's not actually that cold for me, it felt very, very cold. So, um, yeah, very, very cold on Saturday. So I don't know what's going on, but that I think they did say that the weather was going to be getting colder again. Um, yeah, and it just did not disappoint. Well, I mean, it did disappoint, but yeah, they, they weren't wrong. It was pretty chilly. So that was Saturday, and um, I went out during the day. I went out with a friend of mine. So I've been to the gym with my son in the morning and um, we, yeah, we went then for coffee with kind of, you know, our gym friends, which was really, really nice. And then we came home. I can't remember what my son was doing, but anyway, he was doing something. So I went out with a friend of mine and we went um, to Arundel, which is that lovely place where I did spend the day with me, you know, that video you know a yonks ago a few years ago now um it was that place and also the little town where they filled that filmed that film wicked little letters so yeah we went there and um we just went in they've got this lovely pub there it's called the black rabbit and it's a very kind of popular pub especially in the summer because it's right by the river and um i mean i don't know back in the day it used to be quite posery you know to go there in the summer and you know oh you're going to the black rabbit you know i don't know whether it's still like that anymore to be honest obviously I'm, I'm way past that stage in my life you know way too old to be posing about or anything else but um yeah anyway on saturday we went there for a drink and um well i mean it was freezing so yeah it wasn't like a posy day or anything like that but not only was it freezing so we went in there and you know they are very heavily into serving food nowadays i'm not sure whether they always were to be honest i don't feel like they were but hey maybe they were um so yeah they're very into you know into food now and they have got a brilliant reputation for serving you know amazing food so um my son had gone there a few weeks ago and said what lovely food that they you know they have in there but anyway we weren't eating we were just going in there for a drink and um we got in there freezing you know and the woman said you know have have you booked are you saying for food we 
don't know. So she said, oh, that's fine, you know, if you can find somewhere to sit inside. We were lucky. We did find somewhere to sit. So that was all good. And then, um, oh, my goodness, the heavens opened and it was absolutely chucking it down with rain. Like, really, really, really chucking it down with rain. And what was quite funny, why I'm laughing, is because outside, it was like undercover. They had one of those, like, pergolas, but, you know, the solid type ones, the filled in type ones. There were people, like, and I'm not just talking one or two, but lots and lots of people sat having their meal, like, undercover. But they had no heaters. So all of these people were literally sat out in the freezing cold, freezing cold, with their coats on, having their, I mean, it wasn't Sunday, so, you know, it wasn't Sunday lunch, but, you know, having their lunch. And I just couldn't believe it. I just thought these people are actually paying to sit with their coats on, freezing cold, outside, to eat. I mean, that just struck me as completely mad. You know, I mean, like I say, we didn't eat there. My son had said how great the food was. And who knows? Maybe the food is good enough to, you know, to want to sit outside in your coat. But it's not the cheapest place, you know, because we did look at the menu while we were there. Not the cheapest place. So, I mean, you'd have been paying quite a lot of money to be literally eating in your coat, you know, which I just thought that's absolutely crazy, isn't it? Anyway, talking of money. So, <laughs> yesterday... um had to go and get some beans and we were just having jacket potatoes for dinner and um yeah so we were going to um have jacket potatoes the shops over here on a sunday shut at four o'clock very irritating because you know i'm not not the best for kind of getting you know out of the house and things on a Sunday so yesterday we've just taken like Bo for a walk and things you know we hadn't done a great deal but of course then the shops were shut you know and so then when we were having our dinner it was kind of like oh now we've got no beans to have with our jacket potatoes so I went into a shop again that we've got here called the co-op now how much do you think a tin of beans were so I generally do my food shopping in a shop called Audi, which, you know, it's a kind of, you know, what they call a budget supermarket. Um, and I would generally buy the, you know, the tins of like four tins of beans. So, you know, generally I wouldn't obviously have bought a tin of beans as an individual tin of beans, if you see what I mean. Anyway, how much do you think one tin of beans were in the co-op? I couldn't believe it. £1.90. Yep, £1.90. And I just, well, I mean, to be honest, I felt so flabbergasted. I just was shocked that anybody's actually even shopping in there at all. Um, I mean, obviously, it was just it was an emergency. You know, that was what we were having for dinner. And so we needed to get some beans. But isn't that just the most crazy, crazy, crazy price? £1.90 for a tin of beans. I mean, what on earth is going on? Just, yeah, couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. So I thought that was extortionate. Just for one tin of beans. Okay, right. So I've made quite a lot of these, I have to say. Right, let's see if I can do this one. I've brought along all those lovely coloured sheets of paper and I haven't really used any. So let's just do one or two with, you know, with coloured sheets, just because otherwise, why have I even bothered bringing them along? So, yeah, let's just do one or two with some coloured sheets. Okay. Um, yeah, I just couldn't believe it anyway. thought, what an extortionate price. So, yeah, that's, that's just my little moan for the day. I just feel like sometimes the world's gone mad. Everything's so expensive. There we go. Right. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the weather, but we're having this um, cold snap, like I say. And, you know, we've gone from having quite spring-like weather, I think it was last week, 
yeah i think last week in fact probably the last week's mass making i was probably saying how oh springs springs on its way it's it's gorgeous no not anymore <laughs> springs disappeared again and yeah no signs of spring now so I mean, there's been a few bright days still, which, you know, which is nice. It's always great to see the sunshine, but bright and freezing, which is, of course, not quite so much fun. So, yeah, it's not been, not been too, too good. But I think we're having a bit less rain now, so that's always quite a good thing. There we go. Okay, right. My daughter is going camping. So I'm going to probably stop there with the, you know, cutting the pages and start then stapling the pages in and then doing my, you know, my twine bindings. So I'll just get started here. So, yeah, my daughter is um, going on a camping trip tomorrow. So she is in year five at school. She's 10. Um... And what they do is in year five, they have like a, a school camp. So they go to um, Goodwood, which is where I went to the revival, which I also filmed on my channel quite a long time ago. Um, but Goodwood is where like they have all the motor racing events. And that's what I rent my house out for is, you know, events at Goodwood. Um, anyway, she's obviously she's not going for any of those events or anything like that. But yeah she's going to Goodwood and I'm not actually too sure where it is um but they you know they're not camping outside I mean luckily because like I say it's turned very very cold but they're camping like inside it's sort of like a um I don't know whether you'd call it a hostel really but that type of thing so um yeah she's going there tomorrow so she's getting I was going to say excited. She gets a little bit anxious. Um, I think partly, it's got to be said, exacerbated because I'm such a rubbish mum at not knowing all the full details. Oh dear, I don't know what I've done. Um, yeah, so I think partly her, you know, her um, nervousness is about my, <laughs> my rubbishness. So I feel a little bit bad about that, it's got to be said. But yeah, she's um, getting a bit nervous, like she's been saying for a couple of weeks. Oh, mum, mum, I need wellies or mum, mum, I need, you know, whatever it is that she needs for the camp. So, yeah. But anyway, she, um, yeah, she'll be packing tonight ready for it. So they need to take a sleeping bag and you know, I've got to confess, I have not looked at the email to see what it is that they do need to take. So I might have to do an emergency shopping trip with her after school today to pick up anything that we haven't got but I mean I'm hoping that we have got most of what they need um yeah I mean wellies yeah we've got some wellies waterproof coat yep I've got a waterproof coat I don't know what's really going on with that staple I can't really see to be honest but I think that's in there okay um yeah so anyway she's She's going on that tomorrow. That's just for two nights. Um, she said they've already had to choose their dinner for, you know, their, their lunch and their dinner um, for what they're going to be eating. I can't remember now what she said. She said she picked the vegetarian option for one of the nights. She couldn't remember what that was, but she said, oh, mum, mum, I, I picked the vegetarian option. What's going on with my staples? Look at what I'm doing here. It's really annoying. I mean, they are still stapling, but yeah, they're looking a bit weird, aren't they? Anyway, um, yeah. So she said, "Oh, you know, I picked the vegetarian option for you know one of the nights," but she couldn't remember what it was. And then she's picked the you know the non-vegetarian option for the other night. Um, I think she said they had to pick their breakfast. So yeah. And I think when they're there, they're going to be doing like activities, you know, like the forest school kind of activities. So like outdoorsy stuff. So, I mean, they're going to have a brilliant time and they've all had to choose who they want to share a room with. Um, you know, well, I say a room, you know, like a dorm or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure they're going to have an absolute brilliant time. 
think that she said they could have five people in a room. I think she said five people in a room. So, yeah, I'm sure they're going to have a brilliant, brilliant time. So, yeah, she's kind of excited, kind of nervous, but that's fair enough, you know. Oops. Know what's going on with my stapler? This is very, very annoying. I'm just going to redo this one because not really gone in nicely there we go oh do you know I had to laugh so obviously I've said you know my son's been coming to the gym in the mornings so he doesn't come with me but you know we overlap kind of thing because he then showers and goes straight to work from the gym well we were having this conversation I might be repeating myself but you know last week saying how we would love to go to the gym um, you know, when nobody else is there and be able to use some of the equipment that nobody else, you know, can see us <laughs> because obviously, you know, we don't know how to use things and it's just embarrassing, isn't it? If you're there and you know, stumbling about trying to use different things. So, um, yeah, we kind of said, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could come, you know, in the middle of the night kind of thing when no one's there. Anyway, so this morning, look at what I've done here. I don't know what's going on with me. It's getting worse and worse with my stapling. Perfect on this line. Not so perfect when I turn it over and I've been stapled in the middle of the page. Let me just redo this one. Um, yeah, anyway, so this morning we were there and it's very, very busy, like at first, you know, and then it gradually thins out. Now, I have to say, I'm often gone by the time it thins out, you know, because obviously I've, you know, come back home. Um... But this morning we were still there and it had already thinned out. So we were just kind of, you know, almost done with our workout. And then I said to my son, oh, should we quickly have a go on that, you know, that little thing to do these, I don't know what you'd call them really, but like these sit-up-y type things. Um, they're like, you sort of like grab hold of these bars and you lift yourself up on this bar and then you pull your legs in towards you. So, yeah, we had a bit of a go on those and, um, oh my goodness, I mean, they're so hard to do. So, yeah, we were just laughing so much, you know, because, um, yeah, laughing mainly thinking, oh, thank goodness nobody's here, no one can see us, you know, because um, there was nobody kind of in the area that we were, you know, not many people were in there. But, yeah. And the funny thing is, I said to my son, oh, sometimes I see people over here on this thing for ages, you know. I mean, they must be so strong. They must have, like, abs of steel, you know, because we could barely do any. You have to keep yourself really steady. And um, honestly, I could barely keep myself even on there, let alone on there and steady. So I could kind of, like, lift myself up with my arms and then like you could kind of sit on the back of it so I did that and I said to my son well I'm I'm sort of doing it but I'm kind of sitting on it really rather than just holding myself up it's so wimpy honestly like pathetic absolutely pathetic but yeah I'm just baffled how anybody else is um you know so strong to be honest I mean, some of these people, they're so strong, aren't they? Oops. I love watching that, you know, World's Strongest Man. Um, that takes place, it's like between Christmas and New Year. It maybe finishes on New Year's Eve or something like that. And they, you know, they televise it. Um, I think, again, maybe that's on Channel 5. I think it used to be on Channel 4, but I've got a funny feeling it's on Channel 5 now. And, um, yeah, I love watching it. It's it's almost, like, quite mesmerising, I think, just how strong those world's strongest men candidates are. Um, you know, they are so strong. And, yeah, I mean, they must really, really put in some training, mustn't they? I mean, their whole lives, obviously. You know, I mean, I guess for them, that's their career, isn't it? And, um, well, I'm, I'm assuming it's their career. I mean, I don't really know how they could actually fit in a job around the amount of training that they must have to do to oh my goodness i don't know what's going on with my stapler uh you know i don't know how they could fit in a job around all the training that they must have to do but i could be completely wrong maybe they 
maybe they do work as well I don't know but I'm just assuming that they don't I mean I guess it depends what level they're at because you know if they've won a few you know competitions or events or whatever then perhaps that then becomes their career I guess obviously at the beginning before they've actually really won anything I suppose they're still having to work to support themselves I don't know but yeah, they're just like awe-inspiring, aren't they? At how strong that they are. Okay. There we go. Right, last one. So, and then we can obviously put some of our twine around. And then we will obviously decorate one up. So, I don't know what one to decorate. don't know whether to decorate a small one or a big one I mean I I'd love to be able to decorate two doubt there'd be time but yeah if there was that would be very fun wouldn't it now I did bring some purpley coloured twine now what did I do with that can't see it now no can't see that oh well that's a shame isn't it oh well right don't want to waste everyone's time looking for it so, in fact, this is one of those smaller ones. So, this one, I would probably not glue this onto a page. So, this one is one that I would, you know, possibly just use a paper clip as my closure. So, that's that done, really, to all intents and purposes. Um, again, this one, probably I would glue this onto a page. So, yeah, let's put some twine around this. Okay. So I'm going to tie the twine around them all and then do all the gluing at the end. Or, you know, in one go. So let's just pop some of this on. All of these. And I do apologise. Um, I know that I've had one or two messages because I didn't really end up doing much of a restock last week on my shabbydabbydoodar.co.uk website. So... I am going to be doing a bit of a restock this week. I'm not sure when it will happen, but sooner rather than later, hopefully. And I'm going to be including, hopefully, a journal, um, possibly even two if I get time. Uh, I've definitely got two that I need to do videos for, you know, flip throughs. Um, and I've also got some kits. Now, when I say kits, if you saw my recent... Um, Easter pouch that we made and we did a kit for the Easter oops the Easter sorry I'm being distracted now thinking which colour twine did I want so yeah for the Easter pouch I did an Easter kit and the kits that I've got I think I've got four of them that I've put together I just need to film like flip throughs of them but there's going to be four kits going on um, at some point this week as well so and they're very exciting they contain a lot of different things that you could obviously use in your journals so yeah keep your eyes peeled you know if that's something that would be you know of any kind of interest to you um, at some point this week hopefully at least one journal and four kits possibly some other things if I get time um, but all these things, they do take quite a long time to obviously, you know, to make, to put together and then to assemble the packs and to photograph them and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And then, of course, to film a flip through. But just, um, you know, keep your eyes peeled because potentially at some point this week, you know, all of those things will be going in there. So but thank you so much to everybody who does keep an eye out, um, you know, on my website. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. And um, yeah, I mean, I said all along, you know, I'm just hoping that eventually it would just be a really nice place to go and hang out, have a look around, have a browse, you know, and do a little spot of, you know, shopping or, you know, or just browsing. Browsing is fine too. Um, you know, and yeah, hopefully it will just become a bit of a, um, you know, on on kind of like people's radars to just go and you know go and have a look there and just see what's available hopefully there's some different things there that possibly you know a little bit different to perhaps 
you know some other shops or something you know definitely obviously nothing like anything that you would get in a high street shop um so yeah hopefully it's going to just be a nice sort of shopping experience slash browsing browsing experience so yeah thank you so much to all those lovely ladies who've you know who have hopped on over there and you know supported my shop i do really really appreciate it thank you there we go Oh, I hope you've all really been enjoying the um, collaboration videos for the Rach and Bella crafts along with the Angela Kerr um, uh, collaboration. So that's the hashtag junk journal jigsaw. It might just be journal jigsaw. Hashtag journal jigsaw. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant videos, aren't there, in that? So, yeah, really been... Um, you know very privileged to have been part of that and thank you so much to everyone who made all those lovely comments about the uh jigsaw puzzle pieces so i was quite flabbergasted at how many people said that they liked them and you know we're going to give them a go i mean <laughs> it's such a hash of that video that i was kind of like thinking oh my goodness perhaps i shouldn't even upload this it was just so awful but yeah thank you so much because you made my day that you were not <laughs> not just so horrified that you just turned my channel off completely so yeah thank you so much right we are nearly done and we can obviously glue some of these down or you know if i don't get time to glue these down because obviously time's probably getting away away with us now um then i'll just decorate one up and then we will you know i will finish these off in slow time so oops okay okay oh it's so tragic i don't know um you know but i'm sure that most people have probably heard that news about um kate middleton um with her diagnosis of cancer and oh, i mean just so shocking i'm not actually too sure how old she is i mean i was kind of thinking maybe very early 40s but maybe she's not even as old as that i'm not really too sure but I mean of course she's got those three very young children and yeah i mean just absolutely shocking isn't it so i'm sure that you will all you know join me in really wishing her you know all the best and you know yeah like sending sending out sort of good vibes and prayers and things for her you know to hopefully kind of make a, a good recovery i mean i think I saw that she's obviously undergoing chemotherapy. Actually, for this one, I will probably use a paper clip as well. So what I'll do is I'll just leave the time around there. I won't glue it on so that then when I come to use it, I can decide how to, to use it, whether to glue it onto the page or whether to just use it like this. Um, this is my Savile Row papers, by the way. But I will glue on some of these bigger ones. So just so we've got some that are, you know, ready to use. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure how old she is, to be perfectly honest. But yeah, she's obviously, she's got those, you know, those three very young children. And I mean, wasn't she a brave lady to have done, you know, her video kind of talking about it? And, you know, I mean, I'm sure that was the last thing she felt like doing was, of course, a video addressing people, you know, addressing the public and clearing up speculation and all of that kind of stuff. And, you know... Yeah, I mean, the mind boggles, really, because you just think, you know, I mean, fancy kind of having to go on and do that video because, like I say, I'm sure that was the last thing she wanted to be doing right then. Um, but I just really pray that she's OK. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, just tragic. I mean, she must be so, so scared and so, so worried. So it's just absolutely shocking, isn't it? I mean, obviously, you know, King Charles, you know, tragic as that is. I mean, he's obviously an older gentleman, you know. Um, but when it's somebody so young, it just seems absolutely shocking, doesn't it? So, you know, I mean, obviously, sort of sending prayers and things, you know, to both of them. Um, but, yeah, I think just she, it seems just somehow more shocking, you know. Um, 
because she's you know she is so young and because she's obviously got those three young children so yeah just really hope that she's okay i mean as far as i'm aware i don't think they've said what what cancer it is um unless of course they have since i saw the you know the clip where she had first announced it definitely i think they hadn't released what what it was at that point but yeah um it's just so shocking so i really hope that she's okay so yeah let's move on to something a bit more cheery because um yeah it's easy to kind of like talk about these things and then you know it's not so easy to kind of move on from them is it and talk about something else but obviously we come here for a bit of a you know respite from the world and from all the stuff that's going on in daily life so again i'm going to just leave the twine around this one this is my um great expectations papers and i'm just going to leave the twine around there but again i would probably use a paper clip and have this in a pocket this one obviously this is my roses papers and yeah i mean this one i would glue onto a page so we'll put down the the twine onto here so like that okay There we go. And this one is my Pink Paris papers. So, yeah, love, 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 love these pinks with the duck egg blues. They're so pretty, aren't they? So pretty. So, obviously, next weekend, it's going to be Easter Sunday or, you know, Easter weekend, which... Oh, actually, I've just suddenly realised that means obviously it's Good Friday on Friday, doesn't it? So, yeah, hadn't even realised. But yes, of course, it's going to be a long weekend. So I'm going to just announce now there will be no mass making next weekend um, because it's Easter weekend. Um, I don't tend to do the mass makings when it's a bank holiday just because I obviously film them normally on the Monday. And so to have to film them either before the weekend sometimes proves too much of a rush or if I leave it for the weekend I then suddenly have a situation again I'm going to just leave the twine around there oh no I'm going to yeah I'm going to glue that down because I did say didn't I that I would probably have that on glued on um yeah I then um you know sort of think oh I'll get time I'll get time over the weekend and then of course the weekend comes and goes and I don't have time so um yeah I We'll just apologise now, but there will be no mass making next week. There will be a different video. Of course, I will put a video up, but it won't be a mass making one. So just to kind of let you know that. So the next mass making will be two weeks today. I, you know, yeah, whatever date that will be. Right, let's decorate one of these up. I'm just going to quickly count how many we've done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen wow that's pretty cool isn't it sixteen so let's decorate one of these up so should we decorate one of these which is you know one of these kind of ones made with the patterned paper so just want to check that I've got yeah I wanted to check because if I had fly sheet that was directional I just wanted to make sure it wasn't upside down so as it happens this is sideways on so this could go up you know either way so I'm going to have it this way up so yeah let's layer something over the top of this um let me just have a look around I did bring along some stuff let me just see so I've got here some of my perfume collection papers we could let me just cut this out I don't know whether this will work but let's just give it a try so oh next weekend I'm so excited so yeah um so sometimes I have like sort of you know um just time with kind of like you know my daughter on our own so next weekend I'm taking my daughter so I hadn't realized this when I booked it but of course it's actually Easter Saturday um taking her for a day out just her and me 
and we're going to go and do a pottery wheel um so yeah it's a pottery wheel taster session so never used a pottery wheel before i mean i don't know <laughs> what we're going to be like i suspect that i'm going to be horrendous um i yeah my friend who um i went to visit a few weeks ago um you know that i felt like really brave because of you know actually kind of gone off on my own for the weekend and things um so visited her and her husband so she had done a pottery wheel with her daughter funnily enough she said it was so hard so i think they said theirs was a couple of hours and my daughter and mine is also going to be a couple of hours um so i have no idea what it's actually going to be like but yeah i suspect we're not really going to make anything very very impressive my daughter might but yeah i suspect that i won't if i'm truthful but hopefully we're going to have really good fun so um i had to book it about six weeks in advance it was very very popular um but yeah we're going to do that so that's going to be probably our highlight of the weekend or hey who knows depending on how it turns out maybe it will be our low light of the weekend but yeah very fun nonetheless so so yeah, this is my Valentine's papers. This is the documents papers and this is the perfume collection. So I'm just going to mix them up and um, yeah, hopefully get some kind of different different things going on. So let's just ink this up. Okay. Just ink the... So this one I've printed in much thicker paper. So this is 230 GSM. But I like to do that when they're kind of like a topper type piece. So, I mean, that looks really pretty, doesn't it? And then actually, I just wondered suddenly. Oh, actually. Hmm, got some of my great expectations pieces. I don't know whether this is going to look any good, but let's give this a try. These are printed two to a page. Um yeah oh my goodness i'm loving how that looks isn't that gorgeous yeah let me know below have you ever done pottery wheel a uh, pottery throwing that's what they call it i kept thinking well it's not called pottery wheeling is it what's it called yeah i think it's called pottery throwing um yeah let us know below <laughs> have you ever done that how did your piece turn out did you make anything worth you know worth talking about i don't know i can't really imagine that we will but yeah, I should tell you all about it. So it's a two hour taster session. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't know whether kind of like there's a bit of a show and tell at first. Maybe they show you a bit how to use it maybe as a group. I don't know, um, you know, which I'm sort of thinking, well, if they do that, you probably don't really get that long actually at the wheel, do you, after that? Um, and then I think there's probably an option to have your piece fired and then, you know, come and collect it and all of that stuff. I suspect we won't bother going to collect ours because I'm thinking it probably is not going to be worth, you know, anything worth collecting. But hey, who knows? Maybe I will be, you know, surprised. I mean, I have to say I would be surprised. Yeah, I would be. Although, you know, like I say, I wouldn't be surprised if my daughter's turned out okay because she's pretty, she's pretty good and pretty arty, but I can't really imagine mine's going to be much, much good. But anyway, it's all about the fun, isn't it? You know, a bit like I always used to say to the children on sports day. Hey, it's not about the winning or losing. It's just about the taking part. So that's what I'm thinking about the pottery throwing. Not about producing a, you know, masterpiece. We're not looking to make a, you know, valuable pot or anything like that. We're just going to have a bit of fun, really. And hopefully just make some lovely memories, you know, that we can just always look back and laugh <laughs> with, with yeah with fond memories of our pottery throwing experience but yeah who knows what it will be like i mean some people yeah they are really really talented and i don't mean people who do it for a job i mean of course they're talented but i mean some people who do it for hobbies are you know really good at it aren't they um, and I mean, obviously, people who do it for a living, of course, are very talented. But yeah, I mean, some people even who do it as a hobby 
you know, they're very, very good at it, aren't they? So, I mean, some people have potter's wheels in their house. Again, <laughs> share below. Maybe you are someone who's got a potter's wheel in your house. I don't know really what else you could make, really, other than a pot. You know, I mean, you could make pots and bowls and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. I don't know whether you could make anything... I don't know, maybe like a charm or something like that for a journal. Could you make something titchy on there? I don't know. Probably not. Yeah, that's just rubbish. Let's see if you could do that. Oh, erase that from your memory. Just absolute ridiculousness that I was saying then. <laughs> How would that work on that huge potter's wheel trying to make something really titchy? Yeah. Mm. Honestly, sometimes I say things and then I just, I picture the significance of the you know ridiculousness of what i've just said and think what was i thinking of course you couldn't do that who am i kidding right i've just got some of my number tabs here so let's just take this one. Oh gosh why am i why have i picked an oval one to cut out what an idiot <coughs> excuse me oh, i'm trying to be a bit more healthy um, with what I'm eating so yesterday when everyone had the jacket potatoes with beans I'd made myself some vegan cheese sauce which is really yummy and um, it's great because you obviously make it I'm not saying a big batch but you know a big cup full and that will last several days you know kind of four four days or something and so you can have that for dinner with all different things you know for the period of like four days so, you know, you can have it on jacket potato with maybe some, I don't know, broccoli or something. You could have it on pasta. You could have it with, you know, um, oh, I don't know, quinoa. You can have it with all sorts of stuff. You could just have it as a dip, like with some salad and things. So, yeah, pretty, pretty versatile, to be honest. Anyway, so I made some of that yesterday and I thought, oh, I'm going to have that, you know, for the next few days because I'm trying to be healthy. And, um then looked and I didn't have any sweet potatoes and that's the only potatoes that I quite like I don't really like you know normal potato potatoes so when everyone was having the jacket potatoes you know I didn't want to have that and then of course you know I couldn't bring myself to buy sweet potatoes at the um, co-op because imagine how much they would have been if just the beans were £1.90 so um, yeah obviously I didn't do that so I looked in the fridge and I had a cauliflower and I thought oh I'll have cauliflower cheese, you know, with my vegan cheese sauce. Well, what a disaster that was. So I thought, well, I'll put it in the air fryer. And I thought, I'll put it in the air fryer for, um, I think I put it on, on the low setting for like, I don't know, say 20 minutes. And I thought, oh, that will soften the cauliflower up. So I did that twice, which I thought would have softened it, you know, quite a bit. And then... I thought, oh, I'll now put it on high for 20 minutes to, like, roast it. So I thought, hopefully I've softened it, and now I'll roast it. Well, no. Couldn't have been more disastrous. My cauliflower came out absolute, absolutely burnt to a crisp. Like, oh, just, yeah, like burnt toast, but cauliflower. And still raw. I mean, how does that happen? It literally was raw and burnt at the same time. I mean, what's that about? So that label, that there is from my Junk Journal Basics Kit 2. Um, and yeah, this is obviously my number tabs. I think it's my number tabs set 3, I think, this one. So yeah, just put that one on. I was debating whether to have this, but actually I think that little contrast of the black does look quite good on there. So let's just do that. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? It was raw and burnt at the same time. I mean, what a disaster. You have to be a truly, truly terrible cook, don't you, to achieve that? I mean, you know, that's kind of a skill in its, itself, isn't it? To be able to actually not only keep something raw, but also burn it. I mean, yeah, what were the odds of that? I don't know what was going on. Now, shall we have these, which I love? Or shall we have some bling? Might even be able to have both, but I'm thinking probably not. Mm. Oh, that's quite nice. I mean, that's quite, you know, quite a lot, isn't it? But yeah, let's go for it. 
Okay. So like that and yeah, the roses. Let's put the roses down there. Like that. Oh my goodness, doesn't that look so pretty? I love, love, love how that's turned out. That's so gorgeous. So what you've got, let me just pull in. Oh, I do have a journal on the go. Mm, no, I don't. Right. Um, I don't have a journal on the go, but I do have a completed one that's waiting for the flip through. So let's just open this up just so that I can show you how this would look on a journal page. So this is a very, very full journal. So you're struggling to even find a page. So if I were using this in a journal, OK, I would glue it down on this flap. So just this flap. I would either glue it on the edge of a page here like that and it would perhaps open out. OK. Or you could glue it on the edge of a page here. But I would find that a bit strange because obviously you'd have to make sure that the edge of the envelope didn't overhang the page. So then you'd have this kind of look going on, which is a bit, you know, a bit rubbish. So I would either glue it here or I would open it to the other side and I would glue it onto one of these pages. Now, when I'm saying one of these, if you look, I wouldn't glue it on the page that's curving this way. I would glue it on the page that's laying flat, if that makes sense. So I would glue this down onto the flat page in near the spine, not, not necessarily snug against the spine. And then obviously this is your pocket. So it's, you know, tied tied up with the twine. So like that, okay. So I would glue that in with that, you know, the on the flap like that. And then when you use it, obviously open it up and then it would open like this. You've got your pocket here. Mm, I glued that together when I made the envelope. Yeah, quite possibly. There we go. So you've got your pocket here. Oh, mine's glued together when I made the envelope. But anyway, you've got your pocket there. And then you've got, obviously, your booklet here. Like that, with journaling space. And then here, you've got your flap glued down. And if you didn't like the look of this, you could always put something over here. You know, for example, you know, a, I don't know, postcard or something like that. Again, I'm struggling to find something, but. Oh, um, oh I can't find anything, I'm afraid. But yeah, you could always put something down there as a pocket on there as well. So lots and lots of options with these. And aren't they just gorgeous? Absolutely love the one that we've just decorated up. It looks so super pretty, doesn't it? So yeah, not a bad, um, you know, hours kind of work there. We've produced lots and lots of these that are all now ready to use in our journals. And yeah, I hope you all had fun. Let me move this out of the way. And yeah, have fun if you decide to make some of these. And yeah, thank you so, so much for joining me. I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up. And I hope you all have a fantastic few days. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks then. Bye.